I'm Darren from Action Esports, and this is Action Recap, the show where we cover various ongoing stories within the Overwatch Esports community. In the last few years, the Esports community has been witnessing the success of the most popular teams, such as Cloud9, Team Liquid, and TSM, who continue to flourish with funding from new sponsors and multi-millionaire venture capital investment deals. However, one does not need to look far to see a darker side to the esports industry. This doesn't apply to most teams, but over the years, there have been many organizations competing in the tier 2 or amateur level of esports who become notorious for shady hiring practices, mismanagement, and failure to pay their staff and players on time or even at all. One such organization is the now defunct Denial Esports, whose name has once again been making headlines. Founded by Robbie Rignalda, a former door-to-door -door and used car salesman, Denial Esports was an effort to turn his hobby of gaming into a career after deciding to quit college and pursue esports full time. Things were going well initially, but controversy after controversy emerged as players and staff began coming out in droves, accusing Denial of mismanagement, withholding prize money, and failing to pay staff and players on time, if at all. In the summer of 2015, a report by Dot Esports revealed that Denial owed its Halo team $3,000 after the organization refused to compensate their players for the month of July. Players were expected to be paid out on the expected date of August 10th and did not see anything of the sort and were cut off from denial two days later on August 12th. In response to the ensuing controversy from the report, Rignalda released a tweet longer statement providing insight on his stance on the matter. Rignalda advocated that teams should stop paying their players if they fail to conduct proper sponsorship activations. Quote, stop paying players if they stop promoting the brands that make the orgs tick. If they have a problem, then refer to the contract that was written that says they have to work with the org and promote the sponsors. Fast forward to the fourth quarter of 2017, we saw many members of the Denial Esports staff leaving the organization amid growing frustration surrounding Denial's alleged inability to pay their players and staff. In a farewell tweet longer post, Nicholas Karma Primus Haley, Denial's head of media, wrote, quote, I have decided to leave Denial as the head of media following the revelation of a considerable amount of money that is still owed by management to many of Denial's teams, players, and staff. This revelation is unfortunate. As as I have really enjoyed working with my colleagues at Denial, but simply cannot continue under its current management. According to Slingshot, citing Karma and multiple other sources close to the organization, Denial had allegedly failed to pay their players for its H1Z1 and Counter-Strike teams in addition to not paying staff. Former Denial H1Z1 team member Pinekipples alleges that Denial owes the H1Z1 team $22,700 in outstanding salary and prize winnings from the fight for the crown tournament. Karma told Slingshot the winnings were sent to the organization directly and have still not been given to the players more than three months after the event took place. Karma and another source reportedly said Rinalda did not pay staff members and instead offered previous general manager Alex Gonzalez equity in the company. When staff members asked about payment, Rinalda would defer the conversation by making vague comments such as, big changes are coming soon. As for Denial's former Counter-Strike Global Offensive team, the owner owed their players' payments estimated in the range between $40,000 and $60,000. However, there was a more shocking revelation when players revealed that at one point, Reynalda had stopped supplying funding to the players to pay for the utilities of the CSGO team house, which was bizarrely signed under the name of the players as opposed to the organization itself. In fact, the payments were so late that the players had to reportedly borrow money from family and friends to stay afloat. Reynalda has since long fled from the esports industry to start another business venture involving dog biscuits made out of craft beer, and hasn't taken to social media since October 4th when he tweeted that he and his esports organization were working on some issues. And this is where the story had ended, with all communication being cut off, leaving it uncertain if the players would ever be compensated. And now, one set of players that had chosen to remain silent on these matters until earlier this month were members of the Denial Overwatch team, whose plights went unheard heard during the height of the controversy. But now, it seems that legal action is going to take place. 
On September 6, 2018, esports law firms Morrison Lee and ESG Law made a joint announcement stating that they are now standing united to hold Denial Esports CEO accountable for player exploitation. In light of this push to seek justice, former Denial Overwatch players such as XQC and Dante have broken the silence, speaking out on their time with the organization. Dante told VP Esports, quote, I was on the team for about three months got paid once, and then got used to not getting paid. I really don't care anymore. In a reply to the tweet by Morrison Lee, XQC stated that he, Dante, Za, Dehun, and Ginger Pop all agreed to not say a word and take the loss, even if they really needed the money in order to not have the controversy at the time affect their chances at securing a spot on an Overwatch League team. The two law firms wrote in their post, quote, Morrison Lee and ESG Law are normally on opposite sides of the table. Today, we stand shoulder to shoulder. Player mistreatment is an unacceptable part of this industry, and we are committed to eradicating such behavior wherever possible. Reynalda has now shut down Denial Esports and seems to have moved on from the esports industry. We're quite sure from his responses to us, thus far or lack thereof, that he is confident that his misconduct will be forgotten and not affect his future business interests. For now, that's all we have on this story, but we will be sure to revisit it following any further developments. With the Overwatch League seeking to ensure that there is definite contracts in place to pay for player salaries, what other measures do you think need to be put in place to ensure that no more players are exploited like the Denial Esports matter? As always, let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and share as it really helps out the channel quite a lot. Otherwise, be sure to subscribe and follow us on Twitter if you want to stay up to date with all of our content, and hit that bell to stay notified. This has been Darren from Action Esports, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.